Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Brad Tadlock, TN Artist. Today's painting is The Old Barn. I've done this in Art Rage, and I'm just going to walk you through this real quick. The full lesson, which is about two hours worth of training, is over on my Patreon channel, so feel free to jump over there. So basically what we're doing right now is just kind of going in and adding in some soft clouds. I wanted this to be a really uh, kind of a cheery, you know, sun-filled kind of painting. In the background so I'm using the custom brush and this is one of my new brushes that I'll be putting out shortly on Gumroad as well and it may be out by the time this video comes out but anyway the brush will be going out it's just to help uh, make the process a little bit easier for getting out all these clouds and these kind of the the puffy clouds that you know the cotton ball clouds uh, up and in the sky so that'll be coming out soon so once I got that done up I created another layer and then I just blocked in some color to kind of get an idea of the look and everything else then I took one of my other brushes which you can currently get on Gumroad and it's vertical trees brush and then took that and started using that to mark in where some of the background will be and then one of my stencils to do the same thing and this is really just to kind of give the breakup of the colors in the background a lot of this is actually going to be hidden so I wanted to lay out the barn. One of the quick ways to do this is to use the pen tool. And if you hold control, you can make straight lines with it and quickly lay out your uh, perspective. So once I have done that, I then take one of my other custom brushes. It's a soft brush, which is also available on Gumroad for free. And I use that to just kind of smear some vertical lines up and down. It's going to grab some of that ink and start smearing it around as well, which gives me that weathered barn look uh, for an underpainting really quickly. So that's what I've done here. And then once I've got that in, what I'm doing now is just taking my stencils and blocking out where I want bushes, where I want trees to be. Once I've got them blocked in there, I can just roughly lay in a quick underpainting of the uh, trees and then I can hide all the stencils and start building it out from there. So the majority of this painting for the first little bit is really just trying to lay out the underpainting and the highlights and the shadows and everything else for it. So it stays pretty rudimentary as I'm going through it. But then to start kind of tightening it up and pulling in the details, trying to stay a little bit loose on it still and, and somewhat impressionistic, but also wanting to have that kind of that mix, that nice balance between realism and impressionism. So once I've got that laid in, I then re uh, show my stencils by just going up to options and tools and going to stencil options and then telling it to show all stencils. From there, I can start laying in highlights and building up the layers on these. Uh, with using my uh, bush brush that I've created in as a custom stencil and then just kind of keep uh, building up the layers there. Now once I've got that done I need to start seeding this barn a little bit more and figuring out where my grass is going to be. So uh, and I want this to kind of be from a like you're almost laying in the grass looking at the barn kind of thing. And so then what I started doing from here was laying in the rough of where the grass is going to be. So I can get a filler for that. And then using the pencil tool, I start drawing in where I want some of the details to be. And again, uh, using the control uh, button as well, I can start laying in planks and uh, getting a feel for how those old barn planks will be laid in there. These can be as straight or as loose as you want it. I want this to be an old barn, so some of these boards, I'm not worried about all the boards being parallel or being the same size. I want them to be uh, just kind of all over the place. I grew up on a farm, and so our barns were very old that we had on there, and the boards just weren't even <laughs> as far as that goes. You know, So a lot of these older barns, they just made the planks from what the wood they had. And so that's what I'm doing here. Now I have a layer set to overlay and multiply. It was a couple of layers. I actually worked in a lot of layers on this one because I thought it might be easier for my patrons to uh, do that as well to kind of start out working there and get comfortable with building up the textures this way. And uh, because a lot of people are new and I'm trying to do this from the standpoint of a new painter and getting used to digital art and my, my type of digital art, which is a little bit more traditional and digital mix. So, um, started pushing and pulling the highlights and the shadows, knowing that my highlights are gonna come from the sun being in pretty much in the upper left of the painting and shining down, and then trying to catch different things in the light that were they'd be showing. So I was really focusing on the barn. At this point, the barn wood itself and some of the shadows and getting that. And then once I went from there with focusing on that, I decided to start really trying to play around with some of the other aspects of it and move around the painting, zooming out to take a look at it. And the next thing I wanted to start on was the old weathered kind of tin roof that we have here. 
And so that's what I'm working on with this. And again, that's just a matter of laying in some different uh, values of the same color and then just streaking it on with the marker tool works really great for that. Um, the uh, custom brush with the, the old brush that I made, which is kind of a streaky brush. You can do a similar with the old bristle brush that's available as a standard custom brush and playing around with that on it. But I wanted this to be a really streaky kind of feel to it and getting that. So um, I started playing around with just laying in the, again the foundation. This is still part of the underpainting. I'm not doing the details yet, just trying to get the underpainting. And then it was back to these trees and back to these bushes to try and push and pull the color. Also cutting out some of the green to allow more of that blue sky to show through. One thing to remember with the tree is that it's nine times out of 10, not gonna be a solid lump of uh, leaves like a bush would. Instead, you're going to see through it and you're going to see some of the sky. So that's why I cut some of it out and then I go back over it and start pushing in some blues and some highlights. And then once I've got it about where I like it, I create another layer, set it to overlay, and then I start adding in some uh, different highlights and tones to it. But this right now is just a straight painting on top of it with a bush brush that I developed. And um, just kind of doing that. So this is the layers coming up to where I was trying to get an idea of what I wanted to do with it. So I, I made the layer, created overlay, selected the layer below it. So I'm just painting on these trees and then really uh, popped the color that you can see there. Now what I did here was I inverted that tree stencil on the left and then painting the other trees uh, around it. So that way it's protecting that one and letting me still paint on this layer and kind of push and pull the colors as well. Again, stencils are really just great for putting in the base of a uh, foundation for trees and stuff like that. So that way you can really see where they're gonna be and how they're gonna play out. And then once you've got it there, you can go in and paint uh, around it to where some of it is. Like I added some more limbs and things like that with it as well. And so with this part, just kind of pushing and pulling the, the colors and the, the hues and everything else to really kind of give that sun hit uh, streaking across it so I, you know it really gives that feeling of of light hitting it once I've got some of that done then I decide to move on to the bushes a little more and get those laid out so that I can get that done and then uh, start laying in some of the more of the foundation for the grasses and stuff so with the grasses you really want to kind of paint your lights first and then your mid-tone and then your dark coming towards you and then from there you can start doing the same thing again with painting strings of grass that are uh, just blades of grass that are coming up and, and across it and it really kind of builds a texture there are grass brushes you can use i i think you get a better result if you just freehand it and take the time to do so because grass kind of goes all these different directions a lot of time you know it will sometimes lean if the wind's blowing or something kind of the same direction but unlike fur it's not going to be going the same direction most of the time it's just going to kind of be random and so that's what i did with that so again with the bushes doing the same thing of laying in the shadows and the highlights a little more paying attention to what would be overlapping on the building and what would be showing and sticking out further from it so that's what i'm doing here and kind of pushing and pulling and then back to the grass again, just adding in some midtones and some dark values to do it. So now I've flattened everything. I've got it about where I want. So now this is where I start putting the icing on the cake. I'm going to rough up some of these edges because I don't want these really crisp straight edges. I also want to distress it and start adding in some details for where this old tin roof may have bent and creaked and, and groaned and, and really kind of started to come apart. So I paint some holes through it and all I'm doing is selecting the cloud color behind it and then painting away some of the shapes and then from there just really refining it and letting some of the sky peek through, some of the blackness from the inside of the barn peek through and just uh, start laying it out. I add a little bit of the tin roof feel to it, you know, corrugated tin has those streaks in it. I don't want to sit here and paint all of those streaks, but I just want to give an impression of it. That's what I'm talking about with impressionism. You're just trying to give the feel of what something is. So that's what I'm doing here is, is trying to give a, an idea of a feeling of some of it's broken down. Some of it is sitting up on top of the other parts and then zooming out to make sure that it's reading correctly and getting a more feel and then throwing in some highlights and just kind of smudging it with the palette knife. So a lot of that is what you see here. So really kind of finishing this up, the next step I'm gonna to go to after this is adding in some flowers. And one of the downsides with flattening the thing is that you kind of have to do a little bit extra work with your flowers and details in the foreground. But it's really not that hard. It just takes a little bit extra time to do it. So I decided to add in some birds and use the sticker spray tool for that and then just 
twist them and turn them using the selection tool and fade them out a little bit so they're not as prominent in the picture but they are there and then copying and pasting them to new layers and then adjusting them so they don't look copy and pasted on it then taking the sticker spray and spraying some flowers i put them in here and decided I was going to originally go with those orange flowers. I decided, you know, I'd rather just make these look like daisies. So that's what I did. Just some wildflower daisies going in there and selecting it and doing it, laying it out. And then just erasing some of the blades of grass to see so that it really pushes those back into the painting more. And then I do the same thing with some other random uh, flowers and stuff like that. You can use the zoom tool, not the zoom tool, the particle snow for the custom brush and spray in some different ones. And I did it at different settings and just so it's kind of really subtle in the background and then some larger ones in the foreground because it really just helps set that in the distance. So that's kind of it. Uh, just a real quick walkthrough. Like I said, I have a much more detailed version of this in my Patreon page. So if you want to check it out, I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate all the support I've been getting and all the feedback. And I hope you have a, just a fantastic day. Thanks again. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe.